uh, yeah, and that's, I think, enough about me for today. Oh, we also have a session tomorrow, so yeah. When you start the recording, I will start to. You can hear me, right? Yes, yes, Elias, I can hear you. Maybe we can get a confirmation from one trainee. Yeah, they can hear you. So, should I start going through the challenge or how should we approach it? Uh, maybe uh, as others join, you can just start with a general understanding of the project, just and yeah. then you can go on how you approached it and maybe specific how you fetched it. Yeah. yeah. I just give me a minute and thank you. Okay. Uh, can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Okay. So, yeah, generally the task was working with the LIDAR data. Generally, for example, from my experience, uh, at Pivot Bio, we want to use LiDAR or UAV data because uh, the other methods for collecting data are destructive and have like other negative consequences. One, like for example, someone has to go to the field, touch some of the plants, and that is one advantage. Like we need people going to the field, touching the plants. Uh, on top of that, like the data might not be that much accurate because humans are really involved. But if we can use LiDAR data or UAV data to get the initial understanding we are trying to get, like for example, as from my perspective, as people, what we are interested in is to see how effective our product is in a specific field, the field trial. So we want to predict the yield uh, and the nitrogen content of a plant uh, ahead of a time before like harvesting for that like one of the main tool we trying to like use our lidar data and the uav data rather than more of the discussing methods of like going to the field and cutting the plant handing it to the laboratory so for that that is like the main use for the lidar data so once we, I think this is a good enough perspective for it. Let's go through the, how I have the challenge. So, hello, uh, uh, Elias. Okay. okay, just to cut you short, it seems there's some delay or um, an issue with your audio. Uh, mm -hmm. Most trainees are saying they cannot hear you as clearly. Maybe we could just 
adjust the audio, then we can continue. Okay. Can you hear me now or? No, sorry, sorry. What, what, what was that? Okay. Let me try. Okay, I can change my response. Yes, in a minute. Okay. I can see you are trying to maybe say something. I can't hear you personally. Elias, uh, can you hear me? Because I don't think we can hear. C can you guys hear Elias? I think he's continuing with the session. Okay. So I think he has left to resign. We can just wait uh, for Elias.
Elias, uh, glad to have you back. I don't know if you are still experiencing the same audio issues. Can you maybe hear us um, from the chats? Maybe you can tell us something. We still can't hear you, but you can see you. I don't know if you can hear us. Can hear you. You can see your mouth moving. I don't know if you're trying to speak. Can you hear us? Okay, can you hear me? I'm I'm trying to make it direct. Yes, from now we can hear. Oh, <laughs> sorry, like took ten minutes to just fix the audio issue. Now you can hear me clearly, right? Without any issue. Yes, we can hear you clearly. That's much better. Okay. Yeah, let's try to walk through as fast as possible. Now we already lost ten minutes. Okay, yeah. So the first question is collecting point cloud data from USGS3 tip uh, using PDAL. So the inputs are field boundary polygon geo pandas data frame and the desired output CRS. And then we are supposed to like trace the data from Amazon. Now the main challenge for this first question is like getting in if just yeah so i i don't know if you can clearly see the link here but this is like one of the links in amazon and it has a plot bar for like a specific resource location it has a point cloud data it has so we have the boundary and all the point cloud data now our main challenge is like for example when the person specifies the plot boundary, he is not telling us which region we are supposed to use. And here are the file names. Here are all the available like regions where the point cloud data is available. Available. So identifying from which regions we can actually get the point cloud data was the main challenge. So for that, I created like a package for fetching 
the data from Amazon or the available regions and then um, the plot boundary for all the regions. So now after having like this, I did this by scrapping, web scrapping, creating this CSV file. Now we have a CSV file which tells us like the region, the year, and the plot boundary, the X min, Y, X max, Y min and Y max, and the number of points, point cloud points that are available. So now using this, like if I think the function is here in total, not Python LIDAR, search LIDAR. So when the person passes, calls the fish LIDAR, if he can pass the region or not, or just the plot boundary, then if we don't have the plot boundary, we'll check through like all the available regions and we'll check if our point plot boundary falls within that, that given region then we'll have list of regions like maybe Iowa or something that has a point cloud data for a plot boundary that is given to us. Uh, and the other thing is what I did was if like, for example, a person specifies a specific region, but th that region might not have a point cloud data for a plot boundary that is specified. So in that case, we'll give them like an error message. And then it's all about like, going in loop through like all the, uh, all the regions that have a point cloud data for given plot boundary and calling like uh, uh, Pidal. Excuse me. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to ask about uh, the particular place where you are scrapping the data from. Yeah. Okay. I'm scrapping the data from like the actually the AWS, like if we go to the link I showed you earlier, which I don't, yeah. Here for all the regions, you can just specify the file name and it would give you the plot boundary for that specific region. For example, this one is for, okay, yeah, AK. Can, can I or something it says AK can I? So this is a specific region. You can also say Iowa or something, and then it will give you the plot boundary and the number of points and everything. So I I did the scrapping using this specific link. Like for example, let's try another file name. Iowa full state. Then it will give you for Iowa. You feel now you have a plot boundary and everything for Iowa. So for all of the file names, like just changing the link and looping through everything and generating this file where we have the plot boundary, the year, and which state it is. Now, when someone specifies some specific plot boundary for you, you will try to check, you look through this and check which of the regions have a point cloud data for my region. So then you'll be querying using PDAL for those valid regions. You don't have to like query everything or the person doesn't require me to like specify the regions. Exactly. Yeah, sure, sure. All right. Then the other thing is like creating the pipeline like dynamically, meaning like you passing the block boundary, the Polygon, this is like useful for cutting a specific, like for example, if you, there is a building you are interested in, then you can create a polygon string for that building and it will return only the point cloud data for that, for that specific building. Uh, the other thing is region, these are optional, like optionally, but here, when you calling PDAL, you need to specify those things. And then it's just all about calling PDAL. And it will save the last entry files. And also, it will give you the final point cloud data. So I wasn't able to rerun the whole thing. I didn't have like it's on my current environment. But this is a notebook that I did. I looked when I did the challenge. 
and that's just like tricky layer this is optional like you don't need to specify which regions to collect from but like because it takes a long time when reaching the data uh, i didn't want to like i didn't want it to fetch from multiple regions so i was specifying the region but this is just optional uh, and also this is i think a good example of like the the polygon string for example here it's just a square like like vertically but you can specify any polygon and it would fetch when it fits it would return only like for example if this was like a specific building you would be getting a point cloud data for only that specific building so yeah this was like the solution to the first question uh, if there is anything that's not that clear Okay, where did the list of addresses came from on that X file? I think I grabbed it from AWS. I think you can actually there is a command for getting all the file names that are available on AWS. Uh, I can also share it's all it's available on my GitHub and I can also share the file with you like this X file. I think it I don't expect it to be updated now. Like but there might be a new data for 2020 or something that came later except from that like these are the file names so okay so if you have uh, questions oh okay Yes, I was yes. Asking you, you can't read, sorry. Okay, no problem. Just one question. What if the data points that the user is going to input is far away from uh, the regions that are that are listed in your text files? Is it do we have to handle that kind of scenario or will it just return the data point that is near to that specific input? In that case, I think you should just return an input, like you should just notify that it is not available or like the top boundary there is no region that is like covering i think but for most of the us if you are if the region is in the us i think it is covered somewhere by some of the region thank you Okay, Martin. Oh, sorry, I raised by mistake. Oh, okay, no problem. Okay, so I think we can move on to like the other questions. So once you've been able to like fetch the point cloud data, I think visualization is now much of a challenge. Uh, you can even use jopandas.port and it will do that port for you. But the only thing you should be really careful of is like point cloud data is huge, so like your notebooks might get like really big. So like my thought was to uh, plots and then like rendering that specific image uh, because my notebook was like hundreds of megabytes and you can't really push it into GitHub in, in that case. So I think the only thing you should really be careful here is like the data size might be too big. In that case, you should subsample it or render it as, save it as an image and then render the image. Uh, the other thing is for topographic witness index, I wasn't able to find like my up to date code, but there are some resources I can share with you for how to calculate topographic witness index that I used at the time, I think. No. Yeah, this one, it uses QGIS. If you know QGIS, it uses QGIS to calculate topographic witness index. The equation is like uh, upslope contributing area over slope. Generally, calculating the slope, if you just search for how to calculate a uh, slope for dam, like it's 
you can just easily find it. Uh, calculating that stroke contributing area was um, like a hi, bit more yes. challenging. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Uh, can uh, you repeat the last part about the data visualization and how you approached it? I didn't hear you well. So, yeah, I was saying like visualizing isn't a challenge. There are a lot of packages, even you can just use your pandas. Uh, I was saying the main challenge you might face could be like because point cloud it has really big. Like, it, new notebooks can be like huge, like hundreds of megabytes. For that, I the approach I used was like saving the image, like rather than rendering the plots. Like in closely, for example, you say plot, that's your right. Rather than doing that, you save it as a, an image and then you render the image. So in that, the not your notebook wouldn't be that big when you do that. Okay. So that here. So yeah, I was talking about the topographic fitness index. So yeah, I'll share this link with you. Uh, it uses like QGIS for calculating the TWI, but you can also implement it in Python. So here is the link. I think this really good resource in how to approach the, the question. Uh, the other thing is standardizing. So standardizing is like when you get the point cloud data, it might be something like this. And then I use some sampling. Uh, there are multiple ways to subsample. Like one is you can just randomly select a small portion of the data. Like let's say I just want 20, I, I just want to maintain 20% of the point cloud then you can just use a simple decimation function which will just random just go through like the point cloud data and only leave certain portion of the point cloud but this one is not that much like the most effective way to do it but the other way is like dividing the point cloud into like a voxel grid of like cubes and then from those voxel grid you can like so let's say one meter if you decide to have a voxel grid of one meter by one meter, then you might have like 10 points or like three points inside that voxel. Then based on that, you will select one representative point for that specific voxel, and then you will get something similar to this. Uh, for me, I've implemented like by center. So grid by center is like, it would take the like, it will look into all the points in, within the voxel and it will try to estimate the center point using those box, using those points. Uh, the other thing is grid by center is like, rather than just estimating a point, it would take a point which is close to the center of all the points. So yeah, you can try different approaches as well. Like I think there are a lot of ways for standardizing point cloud data. So yeah, if you have anything that's not clear, please let me know. Uh, that part of uh, standardizing, I haven't really understood. Uh, Okay, generally, like you after downloading your point cloud data, it, it looks like this, right? So what you're required to do is have a standardized version of it, meaning like when it gets standardized, let's say with a five meter, you'd have one point in five meter interval or like in three meter interval, you'd have a point, a point, a point, right? So for doing that, you can use like a voxel grid meaning dividing the dividing your point cloud data into voxel degree of like let's say one meter by one meter then like you'd have cubes of one meter one meter one meter right side to by side 
then like within those boxes you might have five points three points or like a lot of points then you will select a representative point out of those three points maybe the center point or the point that's close to the center and then you'll only keep those points within the voxel like you'd have one point within the next voxel you'll have another point so it would be like well structured like this in a grid format so with that bear uh, so yeah that's, that's good sorry uh, did you use a specific library for standardizing or no it's just python like there are I think there is also a yeah a blog post about like ways of like standardizing and subsampling a point cloud data. Uh, I can look into that later, and I'll I can share it with you. Like there, yeah, uh, I don't know how I would be able to share it with you, but I will try to look into it, and I will share it with someone uh, from Ten Academy, and they can share it with you. Actually, actually, Elias, you is an invite link to the week seven challenge. So from Slack, so you can just join and then they can directly interact with you from there. Okay, okay let's check it. Uh, <coughs> when you are. Uh... When you were scrapping that particular uh, endpoint, uh, were you using the requests library or uh, which particular library are you using? Oh, Python. You don't need to like. When I showed you earlier, like when you, it's just changing the regions, and specifically, like this is a JSON file, right? So you can yeah, specifically no, no, no. ask for the boundaries. So just no. looping through the ends and changing like the state, then you can get the flow boundary for each state. You gave me like yeah. it has the number of points. Uh, it has the flow boundary for it, and like the coordinate system that's used. I, this is the same. You don't really need the coordinate system, but it has all the necessary information that you'll need. So. You don't need to use any library, just look through all the file names and like sending the request using Python and then getting the JSON file. From JSON file, you will just extract specific information that you are interested in. I think these are all the main questions. And the last thing is uh, getting additional data, maybe. Uh, I think like this, this site, Crocscape has, like I'm just giving you an example, has like history, folk history for the US, like starting from 1997. So you, it's just like the same as what you've done already with like pedal in the usgs retake data you can also like extract like a crop history for specific region at specific year maybe like you can do something similar i'm just giving you as an example this one but like there are different sites for like climate data uh, satellite data so yeah, this is plus on top of that bonus. So yeah, I think overall this this was all my approach. And like, if you have anything that I was talking about that wasn't clear, I'm willing to go over again. So. Okay, type this in.
Okay, sorry, Elias. Uh, I come late. Uh, no. uh, but maybe, maybe could you tell me the mechanism how how we specifically uh, fetch that data? Okay. Okay, one thing it's in the videos being recorded, so I think he, it's being recorded, right? So you can watch it later, but like if you have specific points that is not clear, I can clarify that, but like going over the whole thing all over again, while we have like the recorded video wouldn't be so much valuable. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Elias. So over to the trainees. This is their time to ask any questions, maybe specifically about what he has just talked about, fetching and uh, transforming the data, subsampling and everything he's talked about. If you also have any general questions on just the challenge, later data, he's working with uh, such kind of data. And if you have any general questions on the field, you can also raise them now because we still have time. Otherwise, uh, we could end the session. I'll just give it another three to five minutes, then we can end the session. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, guys, so I'll assume the silence means we are all together uh, and uh, maybe. Okay, uh, my go ahead. I don't know whether uh, Elias is still in, uh, but uh, it was just that. Let me. I don't know whether I can share my screen. Sure, I think you can. He has left the meeting, but uh, if it is directly to him, uh, maybe you can reach out to him on Slack. But if uh, we can help, you can also just share. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to ask uh, this particular this particular part uh, of uh, this B one B two, uh, what it really means uh, in this particular data set. Whether there's uh, anything that it it has, whether it has any meaning. The B one B two Q L one Q L two, like those prefixes. Yeah. So maybe let me just get this right. That's the same uh, document, the file name.txt shared in the folder. That's the one you're asking. So this one I generated, uh, I generated on my own. But it's, is it the same as, yeah, uh, I've just, as the I've, file name.txt? I've checked actually they are more or less the same. Okay, so I think the way I've understood from what Elias was just saying, these are just like uh, the links to a specific um, area. So if they say B1, B2, maybe it's just getting specific on the area. I am not sure because these are um, United States locations. So I think it's just a specification of a specific area where they have the data for that specific area. Okay. Actually, Elias is back. You can also direct that question to him. I see he's back. Yeah, uh, I had a question. Uh, let me again share my screen. Mm. 
don't know whether you can see my screen. Yeah. Uh, just over here on the on, on this particular part for the the, the, the B the, the, this B ten B eleven B B thirteen B fourteen all that uh, does it have any significance? I didn't hear you. Uh, can you repeat, please? Let me share again. Yeah, I was asking uh, on this, okay. this particular part, the B10, B11, B12, B13, is there any significance that it has, uh, like, uh, can, is there anything you can derive it from it or? I don't think so. Like the last part is the year. And so if I look into the file names, yeah, I don't think so. I think it's a specific code maybe because like it, it's the same region, but like B10, B11, so maybe a specific portion of the region. AK North means like uh, maybe it's, if it's Alaska North, then this one, the first B10 might cover a specific portion of it, like B11 might cover a specific portion of it, but I'm not really certain about it. Okay. Uh, hi, Des. Hi. Thank you for the explanation. I cleared up a lot of stuff. Uh, I have one question. You mentioned that uh, cloud point data would be used for assessing the vegetation of an area. So what kind of data format would be used uh, on the output if when the pre uh, when the processing is done with the data to analyze the plant related stuff, what kind of data format would be used? Okay, for point cloud data, like mainly we use the, the last format. It's an uncompressed version, but it's easier to process. Your question was that, right? Yeah, yeah. Somewhere I saw that they were converting it into GeoTIFF and some other formats as well. I just wanted to know if there was some kind of standard or a preferred format. I, I yeah, the standard for point cloud data is LAS and LAS. LAS is a compressed version of LAS. Yeah, I think those are the main ones. And like for example, when I work with point cloud data, like the data mainly comes in a LAS format for form. Okay, thank you. Do we have any other question? Could we end the session here? Okay, I don't think there is more questions. Uh, sorry earlier for like my issue with the audios, like for the inconvenience. It's okay. I think uh, most of us have experienced an issue or before these online uh, meetings have their own technical issues. We understand and we thank you for actually making time to deliver this tutorial. Just looking forward to continue chatting with you through the week on the Slack, on the Slack channel and continuing learning from you. Thank okay. you from Ten Academy to you. Thank you for us. Have a nice day. I think we'll do more again. Okay, have a nice day too. Bye, Bye guys. Bye.